Hi, everybody. Welcome to another session on Photo Wall. We've got an exciting interview planned ahead with Gavin Phillips. So Gavin is a photographer, he's a digital artist, and above all, he's a teacher. He loves teaching to beginners, to, to intermediates, to advanced. He loves teaching um, photographers to improve their game, to learn about the magic of photography, of digital art. Um, we are very excited to have him here to share his thoughts, um, to uh, learn about his products, to learn about his services, and to hear from him about the whole industry. Welcome, Gavin. And uh, how's how's it there? Where are you, where are you based out of, Gavin? And how's how's it there? Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, so I'm in Dorking in the UK, which is in Surrey. So we're about um, twenty miles from London, um, and uh, yeah, it's quite a nice. Um, Nice day outside, about uh, 70 degrees, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, all good. Fantastic. Thank you for taking the time out for the interview. Mm -hmm. I'm sure our audience will love you. And we look forward to um, our audience learning something from you and, and sharing mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, perhaps connecting with you later on social media or mm -hmm. on uh, direct channels to mm -hmm. learn something from you. Thank you. So if, if you can uh, begin, um, Gavin, by letting our audience know about your journey as, as, um, as a photographer, as an artist, as a teacher, uh, what motivated you to get into this? Was it coincidence? Was, were you forced into it? Did you really, you know, did you plan to get into this? Uh, are you where you wanted to be or, or is it a happy coincidence? Yeah, it really started about 25 years ago when I was doing web design. Okay, I, I taught myself, um, you know, a number of programs and I was doing some web design. And then I saw I was getting a lot of requests from photographers. This is, you know, obviously going quite a ways back here, but um, a lot of photographers were struggling with Photoshop. So um, I had learned Photoshop, taught myself Photoshop. I didn't take any graphic design classes, but um, I found it fascinating. In actual fact, I initially started with PaintShop Pro. Mm. That was the first, I was working in a company in the US and um, we had quite a lot of downtime and, you know, they said, oh yeah, you can, you know, just do whatever you want. So I was, I found that program and I thought, wow, this is amazing. You know, I didn't know you could do all of this with photos. Mm. And that's when I got introduced to Photoshop and, um, you know, that, that really uh, amazed me what you could do with it. I found it very interesting. And um, that's when I started helping uh, photographers uh, with Photoshop, showing them, you know, shortcuts and, and workflows, things that could speed up their, their workflow. And, and obviously things, you know, they were mainly professionals. So it was ways for them to increase their revenue as well. Wow. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure some of our audience um, would have been in school when you started uh, mm -hmm. learning about photography. And so they'd be really excited. I'm sure, Gavin, that the way you communicate with your audience, with your people, with, with, with others of similar interests has changed over these two and a half decades. Mm -hmm. When you started, you know, the internet is, seems ubiquitous, seems like it's been here forever, but it hasn't been so long thinking about it. Um, what, what have you seen uh, the, in the le recent two or three years, do you think, are the new ways of communicating, the new ways to get, get your message out to people and reach people who are interested in your services and products? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, of course, there has been a huge change in the past, you know, six, seven years with the advent of the smartphone. Mm -hmm. I think that's been the biggest changer. Um and there's pluses and minuses to it. The pluses, I mean, I, you know, I'm on the smartphone. It's very convenient. Uh, you can, you know, do a lot of things on there. You can, you know, there's a lot of things you can learn on there while you're sitting having a coffee or something. On the other side, though, I think that the negative impact of it is I've seen that a lot of people, business people, just people in general, are very overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that's coming in right so they're getting a lot of text messages a lot of emails um and what people have kind of forgotten is that you need to speak to people in certain in certain situations there's a place for email there's a place for texting and there's a place to pick up a phone and talk to someone because it's a different experience um and you learn a lot more from people by talking to them than you do from text and email so yes it has changed and i think that the smartphone has you know is the biggest changer over the past you know, six seven years 
Nice. Yes, absolutely. And and I think that's something that some of us have, um, you know, learned the tough way or learned, learned out of necessity. More mm-hmm. so over the last two years with COVID, where even a face-to-face meeting is, is sort of um, next to impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, 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 I see your point about having a place for every channel of communication, which has been your favorite, um, Gavin. Is it email? Is it, is it social media? Or is it, is it uh, which one have you relied on most for your important work? My, um, yeah, it, you just froze there. I think my internet connection is a bit, bit uh, iffy. Yeah, it, it's come back again. Okay. okay. So you froze for about 10 seconds. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're back. So we can, we can, I can edit this. Yeah. 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 I'm we're back, back now. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Bit, bit. Okay. So this was at 345. Let me just note where we need to make the edit. Yeah. Okay. So, Gavin, so what's your favorite channel of communication? Obviously, my favorite channel, I must admit, is either video or face-to-face because the amount of information you pick up from body language, from tone, um, from the focus versus distraction of the human being you're sitting with is, is, is difficult to um, replicate with email or with text message or any other digital text only message because you can't communicate the same context um, is that your mm-hmm. experience or do you find yeah well it it's you know in business and in personal as well of course so the zoom calls obviously have their place and um, you know it's very convenient we do webinars as well of course you know free webinars where we teach in the webinars and that's great people can join from all over the world and, and they don't have to leave their home or their office however as you just said, there is a time to meet people face to face. And, um, you know, you know, to give you an example, we're, you know, in, in, in the, uh, the stages of presenting to potential investors for our photo artist app. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of what we found is a lot of these investors, they try to assume they know the answers to things that they don't know the answers to, you know, (laughs) so they look at a pitch deck and they'll go, well, they, you know, this that and the other but they don't actually know what they're talking about so you know the thing is that that you know it's very important i think that people you know learn or relearn because a lot of youngsters you know my kids are young they came up well they actually missed now but when they were growing up they said we're glad we did we weren't born you know within the last few years where kids, you know, just on these phones all the time, because it's, there's some negative sides to it. Um, you know, they, don't, they were out playing, they're out with their friends, they, they spent their all their time out playing. And, um, you know, with this generation that's coming up with all the Xbox and everything and, and smartphones, you know, you, you've got to have human interaction. And it, it is a different experience. And it also, you know, it, it obviously creates a different um there's a different uh, kind of vibe um, frequency, if you like, that you get from a face to face than you do, um, obviously through texting or, or even even through a Zoom call. Um, but Zoom's better, obviously, than yeah, texting and emailing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, very relevant stuff. Um, so, Gavin, so let's move on to some of your products. So, I know that you know, uh, at least on our marketplace on Photo Wall, uh, mm-hmm. Studio Magic has mm-hmm. been a, a, an evergreen product. It's done really well and, mm-hmm. uh, and our audience loves it. And I'm sure uh, thousands of users around the world love, love this product, this, this sort of uh, pilot uh, marquee product of yours. So if right. you could speak about this product and let our mm-hmm. viewers know about Studio Magic. And also, um, as we were speaking earlier about your new app, Photo Artist, mm-hmm. if you could let us know about Photo Artist and where mm-hmm. we can get it, how we can mm-hmm. get our hands on it. Is there a mm-hmm. version? Is there a trial or do we yep. need to buy it? Yep. So we'd love to hear so, about Studio Magic and Photo Artist. Great. So Studio Magic was created by uh, Alan Mayer in California. I've been working with Alan for over 15 years. And he's another person who's, you know, obviously he's a very creative person. He's a master photographer, a teacher as well. Mm-hmm. And um, With, you know, so he, he was the one that broke compositing. I mean, you could use it. I mean, I suppose any kind when you're adding things to a photo that is compositing. So, you know, for instance, there's one click reflections. There's, um, you know, all of the, uh, the seasonal changes. You can add snow with a couple of clicks. You can add birds. You can add a rainbow. 
and all of these cool things that you can do with two or three mouse clicks. Um, and, you know, I've, I've got many of the plugins that are available for Photoshop because obviously, you know, we use them. Uh, they're a great time saver, but there's nothing like Studio Magic out there uh, that can do all of the different things that it does. And um, it's a lot of fun. You know, if you're just uh, a casual user or you just like to make uh, different, uh, different kind of photo things for your kids or for your family, it's great for that. Or if you're a professional, it's a great time saver. So um, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's just, uh, had it all updated for, you know, Photoshop 2020. So it works with, uh, all versions of Photoshop on creative cloud and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a great tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. We've had excellent reviews from users. So mm -hmm. the, those who'd like to check it out, we'll put in links uh, below this interview, please check it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. And then photo artist, this is your new, uh, baby, new, new kid on the block. Exactly. So with Photo Artist, um, about three years ago, I looked into, you know, what the best apps were, photo editing apps for um, on the phone, okay, to see what the market was out there. And then what I did, I looked at our best selling effects, you know, taking some of the parts of uh, Studio Magic, some of our digital painting, which people love as well, and said, you know, can we make these available Close, not, you know, we're not trying to replicate how they work in Photoshop, but close enough that people can have fun with this, use this on their phones, right? Because it's a lot more convenient. You don't need Photoshop. And, um, you know, what I saw was, yeah, there's a great opportunity here. So we do have a very basic effect up on iOS, which you can go if you've got a, an iPhone on um, Apple Store and look, just search for photo artist, which is F-O-T-O artist, one word. And um, it'll pop up there for you. And it is free to download. And then there's a small upgrade price of 99 pence if you want the extra brushes. Um, but yeah, what we're, you know, we're, we've done a lot of the research. We've looked at uh, all of the competition and we've done, we've got, I've got a, we've got a good team in place. But um, so yeah, we're, we're obviously looking right now for, uh, you know, potential investors. We're talking to them um, because it, uh, I think, you know, it, it's, it's very, it's fun and creative for people doing these kinds of effects. And, you know, like I said, it's um, it's a lot more convenient on your phone. And a lot of people can do that while they're sitting in a coffee shop or, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, that's that's photo artist. OK, excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, is it safe to assume that if not immediately, you will also come up with potentially an iPad or an iPad Pro version? Of, of this app is that on the card? yeah absolutely well it it would be available um you know once it's developed for um yeah for the ipad as well you know because that's obviously gives you gives you more room to to do your creations and for your editing mm -hmm. um and then uh later it would probably be offered on android as well mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Excellent. I ask because we have customers who call in and we know that they buy our products on the iPad directly. So mm -hmm. I think there's been an increasing um, number of customers and users who, who sort of skip the desktop. Uh, and if they're mm -hmm. not ready for the mobile, they're, they're at least using the larger ma matrix uh, tablets like the iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Procreate is extremely popular, as you know, right? Yes. I mean, that's, yes. that's very, very popular. Yeah. Um, however... You know, although they say you can teach somebody to draw, I don't think you can. So, you know, you really need, <laughs> I, I, you know, you, you, I think you need to draw to use Procreate, but I have seen, obviously it's hugely popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Excellent. Thank you. So, so Studio Magic, so is the audience for Studio Magic primarily desktop? Um, and, and photo artists, you're going to slowly move, the, uh, you know, make it, make it appropriate for the more mobile uh, user. Is that the plan? Yeah. So, you know, what we're doing is, yeah, obviously the, they're, they're very different. The, um, you know, the studio magic, we will take some of those effects. So for instance, the reflections, we'll bring that into photo artists, you know, the, the snow adding snow and, you know, there are certain effects that we will bring into it, yeah. but yeah, obviously studio magic is um it's actually an extension it's uh for photoshop which yeah. you know only works on photoshop and only works on um creative cloud the the, the different versions that, that were offered on creative cloud from 2017 through 2020 and onwards of course yeah okay excellent 
So, um, Gavin, would you like to share uh, any insights or anything you've noticed over the last, you know, especially the last 18 months, you know, the COVID situation, a lot of lockdowns everywhere and businesses, some businesses struggling and some businesses uh, thriving in, in this environment. Um, any insights about, about the photography industry, about your uh, understanding or your insights about the um experience in trying to find uh, investors in this period for your app or uh, promoting products through digital channels well if we, we'd love to hear some of your insights in in in, in um the trends you're seeing in your industry uh gavin mm -hmm. yes i mean you know as we we are digital of course um so you but yeah, I mean, it, it obviously affected us because when photographers can't make a living, right, mm. through COVID, then they're not going to be buying much. Um, so, and obviously, you know, weddings, which is a huge part of photography, is a lot, a lot of photographers and portraits as well. They people have to come there, right, to take, to yeah. have a photograph taken. So. Um, you know, I'm sure that that has been a massive, you know, I've spoken to many professional photographers where it's um, uh, their business has, you know, gone virtually to nothing um, over that period. Um, as we are, you know, obviously coming out of it now, the last few months, then yes, um, things, you know, hopefully be, be getting back to, to normal. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen, you know, I, I get the feeling that, you um, there is a lot of people who use, you know, a lot of different uh, apps, you know, on either iPad or um, Canva is another one that I've seen is super popular mm -hmm. for, um, you know, some kind of graphic design work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I've seen uh, certainly um, some changes there uh, through that, that, you know, part of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And so do you see uh, increasingly, do you see, you know, physical uh, photo shoots and wedding, uh, wedding uh, scenarios uh, coming back? Are they, are they still happening in the US or in, or in the UK? Do you see much? Oh, yeah. That? Oh, yeah. They're, they're all coming back. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, they're certainly back at the moment. Um, and I think uh, uh, quite a number of US states are not going to be locking down ever again. They've already said that um you know they're they're pretty much done with it so um what the uk does we'll see but um a lot of european countries as well you know aren't aren't uh, you know they're, they're finished with this so um you know hopefully it uh you know that that's the way it goes forward because people want to get married and um you know obviously they need a photographer for that so um yeah but i i think that on another on another level it's 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 been nice for people to have a creative outlet during those stressful times you know mm -hmm. to be able to do something creative yes. um and have those tools available for them you know uh if not on a desktop it's more convenient to do it on a, on a on a tablet so yeah it's good you know i think it has helped people right right excellent thanks for sharing that perspective gavin um if, if I could request you to share some tips um, or suggestions for some of our younger viewers, some of our um, um, audience who's, who's just setting out or who are figuring out whether they should quit their job and start a, um, a freelancing business or start something in the, in the photography space. Um, is there anything you'd share with perhaps a younger self of yourself, you know, something you know now mm -hmm. that you wished somebody um would have shared with you a few decades ago mm -hmm. yeah sure i think that um you know if you, if you want to be a, a professional photographer there's certainly plenty of opportunities out there and also you know you've got to i think also look into the drone photography as well mm -hmm. because i think that's you know a very big market it's um and video you know, I would also recommend that people also look at the video side of it as well, because um, they kind of complement each other. They're different, but, you know, it's it's always good to have more than one thing that you can do as a freelancer. So, um, you know, photography, depending on what kind of photography you want to do, you know, is that um, 
you know, is that landscapes? Is that weddings? Is that portraits? Um, you can always find, you know, for weddings, you can, you can always, um, you know, help out a photographer, learn from them. Uh, weddings is a lot of work. There's a lot of post-processing you have to do, you know, so you do have to know Photoshop or something else. Now, you know, some people have said that some of the other um, programs like Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, um, you know, that you can use those instead of Photoshop. I would <clears throat> recommend possibly trying both. You know, if you want to, you still need to know Photoshop, really. Um, if you, you know, if you want a, you know, a job. So if you're a photographer <coughs> and you're, you know, so if you're a wedding photographer and you're working for, you know, you could be a freelance wedding photographer. So you go off and shoot for another company you will know, need to know Photoshop to be able to process and do everything because everybody is still using Photoshop and maybe Affinity Photo as a second, you know, but obviously Lightroom as well. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Okay. Yes, that's, that's really useful um, advice, uh, Gavin. <coughs> drone, you know, we, we hear, you know, drones, uh, drone photography can create effects which seemed impossible, you know, almost sci-fi sort of uh, effect. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's excellent. And relatively easier and cheaper as well, right? You don't have to right. have the right. whole set to make it yep. look like you've landed from a, a planet or something. Right, right. Yes. And, and video is another good advice um, because I think there's a lot of interest in mm -hmm. youngsters and in, in basically consumers of wanting more video um, mm -hmm. than just static. Of course, the magic of a photograph doesn't go. It, it's timeless. Mm -hmm. Video is more consumable, more shareable, mm -hmm. um, so much more exciting. Thank you for those tips. Um, and also the, the fact, you know, touching, so the, feet, the, the, the point about um, keep your mind open and explore the other software, uh, not only Photoshop. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be, be aware, look at, um, and also, you know, if your passion may be landscapes, right? And there's some, obviously there's some stunning places to photograph. Mm. And I would also suggest that uh, if you want to shoot landscape, you know, there's, there's also, you can, you know, you can possibly sell to stock photography agencies as well, right? You right. can sell your photos um, and learn what they, what their requirements are to sell to, you know, as many, many stock photography companies out there. You can also, you know, sell your prints, um, you know, through a website as well. Um, you know, you may want to look at other things to enhance those photos, you know, for landscapes, you might want to do, add some textures or different things, you know, which gives it a different look. So there's a lot of ways to separate yourself from, you know, the, the thousands of landscape photographers out there, not just, um, you know, simply taking a great photo because nature does look, is beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you want to do something a bit different, not just a regular photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, thank you for mm -hmm. that. Um, I just like to touch upon a last point uh, before we wrap this up. So there is, you know, be doing a, running a business or making uh, or, or creating a living out of photography is obviously way more than just, as you correctly said, just way more than just taking a, a great shot. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people who can create great shots, but can they convert that to actually a living on mm -hmm. they can feed a family, uh, build themselves up? Do you have any advice for the youngster who, who's, who's doing this? Should you, you know, there, there are two approaches that people take. Some say, take a safer route, um, you know, do a job, work with somebody, un, uh, intern with somebody, and then try these freelancing agencies, or sorry, the websites, you know, the, chat, the barrier to entry has dropped tremendously nowadays. You don't have to know somebody in the industry to have your work seen. So you can list on stock photography, as you said, you could uh, list your product on marketplaces, uh, do you have any advice on how and what does a, a, a youngster do to learn about the business of photography rather than just the technology, the technique of photography? Mm -hmm. So I would recommend that depending on the type of photography you want to, you're interested in, is to go physically ask another photographer, just say, like you said, to be an intern, you probably have to start unpaid initially because you don't know anything initially, right? Unless you've had some official training or you've got a degree in it. Um, also, you know, you do need, um, you know, obviously a professional type camera and you would, what I recommend with that is, is to ask, you know, obviously there's many different brands, uh, but 
you know, you do need a professional photo- uh, professional camera with equipment, which does cost money. Some a lot of times that you can get that, you know, on um, you know monthly payment, that kind of thing, um, and make sure you insure it. You know, keep an eye on it because it's expensive and you need lenses. So you know, there is a bit of a cost, obviously, to to getting in here. But what's nice about it, like you said, the bar has been lowered, or it it's. You, you know, you can go out on your own and photograph landscapes or people um, and, you know, and, and offer those to stock photography and, and you know, make, make money from that on, uh, you know, as a sideline, um, you know, but you, you will need some, you know, a guiding hand if you're starting out fresh to know how to photograph you know, buildings, if you're doing, you know, if you want to do cityscapes, if you want to do uh, landscapes uh, or people. Um, and obviously when you're photographing people for stock photography, you need uh, model releases, those kinds of things. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would welcome the help and will teach. Yep. Excellent. Thank you for that, Janet. So get the right gear, get mm-hmm. some training for the part, for the pieces, for the work you want to do mm-hmm. and go out there and actually do the stuff. Exactly. But yeah, exactly. uh, great, great advice. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and, and I think we're all blessed to be in a time when training is, is sort of available for everybody who's willing to put in the time to actually learn. It's no longer. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's plenty of, um, there's a website called Meetups and, you know, there's probably others like it where you can go onto Meetups, you can put in what your, what your hobby is, your interest. Yep. And Meetups is only about physically meeting. You know, it's not about doing Zooms or anything. So you, there are many photography places all over the world where you can go into the group and go and do, you know, photography sessions. They have portrait sessions. They have, you know, uh, in London running around, you know, uh, photographing the bridges and all this. And there's a lot of variety of um, amateur photographers who are very good. It doesn't just because they're an amateur or it, they're not a professional. I wouldn't call them an amateur. There are very good photographers who just don't want to, you know, they've got their own job and that's yeah. their that's their passionate hobby. And they're just as good as a professional. So um, you can learn from them. Yeah, those meetups. And uh, yeah, you can, you know, become a professional photographer, learn it yourself through people teaching you. You don't need a degree in it, but yeah. you do need an eye. You do need, you know, some help and some advice and that will get you going. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. That's good advice, um, Kevin. Thank you for that. Okay, so uh, I think we're um, we're done uh, mm-hmm. with, with most of the points we wanted to catch up with Gavin for. Um, mm-hmm. So check out his plug. Uh, check out his software, Studio Magic. Uh, t- check out his new uh, app, Photo Artist, right now on the iOS, coming mm-hmm. soon on on larger devices and Android. Uh, mm-hmm. Give him feedback. Um, I, we will post social media links uh, mm-hmm. below this on how you can reach out to him. Don't hesitate to tag him, to send mm-hmm. him messages. Instagram is his preferred social media platform. Reach mm-hmm. out to him on Instagram. And uh, we wish him all the luck and we look forward to learning stuff from you, Gavin. Thank you so okay. much for your time yep. and, Super. and uh, your uh, the sharing of uh, information. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.